Welcome back, Korea's Best Show viewers. My name is Monique Adams, and as you can see, we're somewhere different. It's different vibes. We're here at Hilton Hotel for the Heart Foundation Breakfast Fundraiser. Um, there are a great there were going to be great guest speakers. You see, I'm even out of, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just like so happy and excited for the show. Um, so yeah, there are going to be great guest speakers. Ilka Platt is the master of ceremonies. And there's going to be a, dis a panel discussion about heart health and dietitian and all things health. So make sure you keep on watching and enjoy. be seated. In absentia of the Minister of Health and Social Services, it's also just due respect for such a prestigious occasion. Um, and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming here this morning. Um, I am happy today. This red looks gorgeous in the hall. It takes me back to, I think, two months ago, Valentine's Day. It just feels like there's a lot of love in, 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 in the hall. Do we agree? And today we're going to give a lot of love. Um, if you look to my left, to your right, you will see such beautiful drawings and we're going to describe what that is in a second, so at the end of the program. My name is Ilka Platt. I'll be um, preceding the ceremony for this morning and thank you very much for allowing me to do this. Uh, let's observe our protocol um, in the absence of the Minister of Health and Social Services and the speech will be read out during the course of the program. Um, to the Ministry, uh, we would like to also welcome uh, the Chairman of the Namibia Heart Foundation, Mr. Daku, because of you we are here. Um, I'm sure you're very proud to see this day actually here. Um, we would also like to acknowledge all of the panelists. There, um, a lot of doctors in our presence, uh, a lot of educated doctors, and we will mention them um, name by name once we call them up um, for our panel discussion. Uh, those that purchased a table. I'm going to start again. Good, uh, good morning and thank you for all being here today and being present here. Um, in the absence of the Minister of Health and Social Services, Dr. Kalumi Shangula, um, he made an excuse this morning that he was actually summoned to a meeting with the Prime Minister, so he cannot make it. But um, I just want to thank him for, uh, the, um, for his um, uh, um, willingness to be part of this event. Heart health is, is very, is a conversation we need to have as often as possible. It is a growing concern for our country. And I think from experience, um, heart surgery myself in 2008, this is a, a, a really relevant um, topic that we need to address on a daily basis to make people aware of heart conditions. And this event serves with the aim and purpose of normalizing the discussion to bring light, not only to the negative side, but also ways in, in which unwanted heart health concerns may be prevented and dealt with. Heart disease refers to several types of heart conditions and unlike most other diseases, the symptoms of heart disease are often silent and not diagnosed ex uh, until one experiences symptoms such as a heart attack or heart failure. Just as, one, just as we have common worries in our lives on a daily basis, our health should be just important to us and we should constantly make priority because without it, we are at a standstill. We are at the Namibian Heart Foundation feel that much more needs to be done when it comes to educating the Namibian nation on the heart health and additionally helping and guiding and supporting individuals affected by suffering from cardiac disease. It, it is with this mention that we use this fundraising events as a stepping stone 
to do, to do more within society. As the founder of the Namibian Heart Foundation, kindly grant me the pr privilege to shine light on the importance of this fundraising and others to come maybe, as well as noble objectives that we cannot attain without it. We appeal to you that this attending, as well as those watching, to reflect on supporting our organization in any way possible. May today's event be the first of many to see in which we plant and see fruits in, in years. Let us not be affected by a disease before we support, but much rather become part of the initiative to prevent this ill ills with us and our family. May we not only attend and forget that the heart disease ex exists, but constantly advocate for better health and be ambassadors for change. In conclusion, I would like to thank our sponsors, especially um, Capricorn Group, who made this event possible. Um, I am really grateful uh, to have you on our side. And uh, you guys are the ones who started when the Art Foundation was established in August 2019. Capricorn were on my side. And I thank you guys for holding our hands and walking this very important uh, road with us. May God bless you and protect you and your family. Thank you very much. Can we say that as such? Do you feel that Namibians um, or even your patients or those who were forced to come to you because the doctor prescribed them to come to you, do you think that we have that healthy lifestyle in general? And please support your answer. There's, uh, as, as always, there's only a small group of the population that actually follows you know, positive lifestyle behavior, and that's across the world. Um, so the patients that come and see me are usually those after bypass surgery or valve replacements. So for them, it, it, it's more critical and it's important that they adhere to that. And even some of them refrain and then eventually fall back into destructive lifestyle habits. But I think the, the reason why it's, it's not easy to follow positive lifestyle behavior, um, and that's why the majority of people don't. So it's, it's, it's hard work. Um, it's discipline. Um, I mean, dietary-wise, exercise-wise, um, people don't even take their medication, which is actually the easiest thing in the world. Just pop the pill. But they even don't do that. So it's, it's always going to be a challenge. And people always play jokes on us and say, well, you know, I hope they can invent medication or a pill that can make you fit and make you this and make you that. And then I always tell them, I hope they don't because then I'll be out of a job. But um, yeah, it's, it's always going to be a challenge. I think people are, we are inherently actually a bit lazy. And, and that's not something that's about to change within the next foreseeable future. And, and we've seen it. I mean, the simple rules, and I'm at least one meter apart, apart from me not wearing a mask. You know, it's so difficult for us to follow the basic instructions with social distancing, sanitizing your hands and wearing a mask. Um, let's come to the healthy food lifestyle. Um, luckily, so far, you know, I've, I've given birth to two sons, and I'm one of those cautious, you know, people. But then again, some ladies have, you know, a lot of a fast metabolism, praise God, and then some, you know, take a little bit more to do so. But when it comes to a strict diet and eating healthy, so we spoke about the lifestyle fitness. You probably have the same issue, but now with the food. So what is the number one thing that really sets back your patients from a dietitian point of view? Uh, I will agree with, with Henry. Um, we are creatures of comfort, so it's, it's difficult, you know, it's effort to change behavior. And there's a whole world opening for us in terms of science, we call it neuroplasticity, um, that you are learning behavior and there's certain paths in the brain forming and then it becomes automatic behavior. And to change that is difficult, it's hard work, so that would be another discussion. Um, I think the other thing that is also important is education. Because if you don't know, how are you supposed to change? So specifically in my practice, I spend a lot of time on educating patients. 
um, first basics, you know, what are nutrients, what are food, or what is food, and um, um, the basic macronutrients, micronutrients. So from there, we can start discussing, according to that specific person, why is it necessary to change, and how are we going to do it, and also how are we going to put plans in place to make it as easy as possible for you. Yeah, um, we paid to be here. A little freebie consultation, Doc. I hope you don't mind. So what are the <laughs> dangerous foods we shouldn't include in our child's meal and our meals? The top three. So when we cook tonight, ladies and men, we know, uh-oh, Oh, we've been told you shouldn't eat a lot of that. What would they be the top three to prevent heart disease? Okay, so you're going to love me. Um, there's no bad food, right? That's the first point. But the first three ingredients on, um, on, a, on a product is the things that you should look out for. And that is sugar, salt, and fat. If and we love those. Exactly. Our tongues like, like the taste of sugar, salt, and fat. Right? So, um, and did you know from the year 2010, there's now more overweight people in the world than there is normal weight. And it's because our whole world has changed. We are becoming less active. The type of foods that we eat, it's processed or even ultra processed. So if you want the tips, moderation, variation, um, and to have a balanced life. All of those three, it's the basic things in life. All right. You're welcome, that was free of charge. Um, you know, like, I always want to blame it on social media. Now it's like, everybody's just like, like, even for my kids, it's like, pop any oya, get off the phone, go outside, play, you know, do whatever. But now it's like constantly, like you said, we've been become, become passive and just sitting here. Um, Doc, you are with kids every single day. That is your passion, that is your speciality. I can only imagine if somebody were to tell me, like, my kid has heart disease. I'm not trying to say that, you know, in an adult, it doesn't feel as bad, but as a mom, as a parent, what are some of the major differences between diagnosing someone that's in their late 40s or 50s and, let's say, even as young as a six or a seven year old? Is that possible? Yeah, so in general, like I said, it's just unfortunate that the um, um, circumstances in Namibia are a little bit different. Um, being a new country, effectively, so we do not have the services that we should be having um, for children heart diseases. Now, the, 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 the first step is actually starts while the, 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 the babies are still inside, inside the womb. So in general, we would like to know um, that there is heart disease um, uh, right then already so that we can plan forward. Um, and, and plan the delivery sometimes, because sometimes you want to um, uh, to take certain precautions right at birth. Um, and, 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 and as clinicians trained for this, we, 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 we generally have to counsel um, patients um, while they are pregnant, um, together with the fetal maternal um, uh, specialists, um, um, about um, uh, what is going to happen. And sometimes we have to make difficult decisions, like what um, uh, the pastor was talking about, about um, uh, even termination. But um, the reality is that that program in Namibia is not well developed, so we are kind of shielded um, from making those decisions now. But overseas or in Cape Town where I trained, sometimes people have had to make those decisions where um, uh, the, the abnormality is just so huge that it's actually not compatible with life um, going forward. And of course, um, you have to respect the cultural and religious uh, beliefs around that particular family. So we do not necessarily um, impose or force these things upon them. Um, we have to discuss and take them through the science, obviously, but um, as clinicians, while well, <laughs> most patients actually believe that we probably don't believe in God, we actually go through, we believe that this was gifted to us to do this job. So we have to respect what they believe. Now, most of our patients are actually diagnosed right after they've been born already. And it's a, it's a tragedy that most of them are actually coming late. Um, uh, you find a person born with heart disease but coming um, to get diagnosed only in their 30s or 40s or even 50s, we've had a lot of those. But those are natural survivors, we call them, and most likely they haven't had um, um, heart disease. Now, again, going back, um, we, we know that most of the miscarriages and deaths that happen while the babies are still inside are actually genetic related and, and, and most of those losses, actually most of those fetuses, um, uh, looking at what the world has done with them, they found most of them had heart disease. Um, so it's a very uh, a real thing. Now the emotions coming around this are quite intense. Um, it's an emotional um, um, uh, uh, career, I must say, but you, you, 
And the thing is, you never quite get used to death or loss. <laughs> Um, and, and they say that uh, if let's say a wife loses a husband, they are called a widow and the husband is called a widow. But there is no name for a parent that loses a child. So the emotions that come around that is it's very intense. But um, it's something that you, 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 yes, you are trained to do, but also it comes with a little bit of calling. That, uh, and of course, we do it in a multidisciplinary manner where we involve other people as when pastors come in, social workers, psychologists, to try and just get everything together and do everything holistically and you have to have a heart yeah in your line of business yeah. and yeah god bless all the doctors that have to make those difficult decisions i can only imagine what you have to go through every single day um dr turner gave us some you know um tips on what to look out for from a healthy lifestyle and i'm not talking about you know going to the gym just to take selfies post it and then i go home but like what <laughs> what are those Let's give about two or three practical things that we can do when we leave this you know, building right now to really prevent it. I think sometimes it's a bit too late. We always cry over spilt milk. But it's how do we prevent this from happening? Apart from it being genetic, like Dr. said, if we don't have it, it might happen. But how do we prevent heart disease? Heart disease from a physical activity perspective is, is number one is, is cardiovascular disease, uh, cardiovascular exercise which means walking, running, cycling, swimming, anything like that. So the first practical step is to try and up your, your physical activity level. So whether you do more frequent walks, whether you take the stairs instead of the lift, there's a few practical things during your working day. So to that extent, a lot of companies overseas have, and, and even locally, do standing working stations, for example, where um, just the time sitting uh, already increases your risk and the time standing actually expends more calories or more energy expenditure. So there's a few basic things, but I think in, in general, as is the case with, with dietary habits, your exercise habits should be balanced uh, with a balanced ratio between cardiovascular resistance training, flexibility training, um, so that you don't, you know, too much is, is, is also not good. And so there's a lot of debate currently going on, I think, about uh, cardiovascular exercise, uh, cycling, long, long distance running, where people just, you know, go overboard with it. Es bloemen pink fijn. Zij is pink fijn. Zij is rechtig. Um, Baie gezond. Om zo so te kan sê. Daar was het tijd waar het gelijk het. Oeh, bloemen, bloemen raak nou. Blauw of dit is een geheime rij. Maar dinsdag bij die dokter het hulle vir ons weer positief verteid gegeen om te sê Blomme is beter, die haarkie is beter, daar is nie Het is nie een nood om nou die operatie te doen nie Hulle het die, voor, die, die voorbeeld gemaakt van het is een groen, rooi, rooi is nood En dan is het oranje, geel en groen Nou blomme is dus een oranje in geel, so dat sê dat het een nood nood is sê, maar dit moet gedoen word, die operatie. Lauwen is geboren in die kaap uh, op 27 december 2019. Um, ons het uitgevind op 20 weke uit haar kwaal. Um, ek is dus na specialist Tony Kaap, wat vir ons gesê dat hy het nou die tetrology al verlou um, en hy het voorgestel ek kraam in die kaap. Ons het daar aangekom in december 2019 en toe hy gebore is um, onmiddellik toe sien hulle, maar daar is nog een paar extra probleempies die hulle nie op die scans kon optel nie. Hy het een um, engel malformation gehad, wat betekent sy darmpie het nie vastgegroei aan sy um, Holiki, ik kan het niet. Ik kan het niet vertellen. Um, dit is bijvoorbeeld aan zijn nier of aan zijn blaasvas. Zo um, so hij nou ook een last om die sakkie te nemen gekregen waar en zij um, poefjes aan gaan. Um, hij heeft ook een tragie last om want zij uh, ligt weg als een beetje vernauwd geweest. Zo so, daar wachten ze maar net om te kijken dat hij groot genoeg groeit dat dit kan uitkomen. Um, en ja, dit is toen nou maar is een schok geweest om al die dingen dan nou te, te 
ontdek met, met geboorte, ons het niks van dit verwacht nie, ons het nou wel geweet van die hart, um, hy het sy hartoperatie ook gehad, wat alles nou tydelike oplossings is, um, en ja, ons is nou weer op pad kaap toe, um, in maart, begin maart, vir die volgende stappe, wat hulle dan nou die groot hartoperatie sal doen. Well, guys, that was such an amazing, amazing ceremony. You know, it really started off the weekend with a heart of giving and giving back and really highlighting important issues that's happening in Namibia. Really, shout out to you, Mr. Gerard, you're doing amazing work, as well as the Capricorn group. Now, we, it's still, it, that was the beginning, that was the tip of the iceberg. Now we're moving on to Charnay Boeta, who is in our today's careers publication, so make sure you grab yourself a copy of our Namibian Sun, Republic Kane, as well as Algemeine Zeitung, as the new project coordinator for, you know, the booklet that you see everywhere. Um, she is going to, you know, talk about her experience as the new project coordinator for NMH. So enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is Shana Buerta and I have been working for NMH from February this year um, as the project coordinator for the school project and the education project. Um, and what it entails is we develop um, and distribute educational books for, for children from pre-primary up until grade three. So my job is to coordinate this project with the teachers, designers, distribution team um, and the different regions and um, I'm very excited to work here and I'm looking forward to the, the way forward. Well guys, I know, I know. <laughs> it's the sad part of the show where we need to say goodbye but I know there was a lot of interesting and different things on today's show and I really really enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed it as well so you know for myself Monique Adams and we're here at Hilton Hotel um, I need to love and leave you so have a safe and blessed weekend make sure to wear your mask hand sanitize and keep a safe distance we love you and see you again next time